On the steps of East Asia, sandwiched between two superpowers, is the country of Mongolia. As we enter an era of global power struggles and great change, Mongolia is also undertaking its own transformation. We sit down with the country's Deputy Prime Minister to discuss what a new Mongolia will look like. I'm Yusuf Aram, and you're watching One on One. Deputy Prime Minister Amar Saikan Sainbuyan, thanks for joining us from the Mongolian capital city of Ulaanbaatar. Now, we've got a lot to discuss, so let's dive right in. Mongolia, it's a landlocked country. Now, the borders have been shut down for the past two years due to the pandemic. How has your country's economy coped with this revenue loss? Well, like any other countries, uh, Mongolian government is uh, dealing with the post-COVID issues and trying to recover the economy as fast as uh, possible. Uh, as you know, all around the world, pandemic uh, is not uh, is uh, you know more than a health crisis. It become information and socioeconomic crisis, including maybe emotional crisis among all the people around the world in different nations. But uh, we were able to uh, come over the uh, pandemic uh, problem with the minimum loss, and also were able to move to the normal. Uh, stage. So in order to improve the economic uh, links and also economic environment, the Mongolian government is introducing new policy called the six uh, economic uh, pillar policy, which will promote the infrastructure, border port uh, improvement, and also energy, including urban development and green development areas. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when I was preparing uh, for this interview and uh, researching Mongolia, I saw a lot of forward planning. This is a, definitely a sign of political s stability. And uh, one of the things I came across was uh, your prime minister, Oyun Ardena, unveiling a 30-year plan. He called it Vision 2050. Now, w where do you see Mongolia in 30 years? Well, we, um, Parliament of Mongolia reviewed and passed this uh, Vision 2050 in uh, 2019, but because by that time there were no COVID, no pandemic, so we were planning to implement, start implementing the projects and the policy. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic and COVID-19 problem, it was delayed. So, uh, like any other countries, uh, you know, pandemic, uh, we took all the necessary measures to prevent and stop the spread of the pandemic as quick as possible in order to quickly recover the economy. So in order to do that, the government of Mongolia, State Emergency Commission, introduced an inclusive and adoptive policy, which could be followed by the uh, citizens and also implemented the bi-phase so strategy to launch uh, national testing and also to make sure that uh, every citizen get the proper treatment and have high vaccination. So because of the high rate of vaccination, uh, we were able to move forward and it enables Mongolia to move forward safer, sustaining and rebuilding on the progress we have made in the last uh, two and a half years. So now it's uh, time, uh, it's a unique time, not only in Mongolia, but all around the world, to recover the eco economy. So because of this uh, reason, the government of Mongolia, the prime minister today just addressed the economic form of Mongolia uh, by introducing his uh, uh, six pillar economic policy, which is the main part of the Vision 2050. And through this, we will support uh, uh, economic and uh, social cooperation between public and private sectors and prioritize some of the uh, valuable state uh, uh, you know, companies to bring in public uh, to improve the governance and governance also improve the structure and, and also bring in more better management to uh, strengthen and expand the cooperation between the private and public sector. Uh, for this reason, we invite international investors and local businesses to cooperate with the government to successfully 
uh, implement uh, the uh, new vision, part of the new vision, uh, which is the six pillar economic policy and also participate in major infrastructure and um, other projects, uh, mega projects in Mongolia. I wanna go a little back to the past so we can talk about the future. Now, Mongolia has a mm. tremendous history and uh, historically they've had uh, very close ties with the Turkic people of Central Asia. Now, let's get back to the present day. Many of the countries mm. in this geography are now members of the Organization of Turkic States. How does Mongolia view this organization? Well, it's an important organization, a uh, multilateral organization, which uh, you know conducts very active uh, operation uh, in the Turkic state. Uh, and Mongolia is uh, open for any possible uh, cooperation with the organization. We value the activities of this organization. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of uh, cultural ties between Mongolia and uh, the Turkic states as well. So is there any type of uh, correspondence going on on an official level between the organization and the Mongolian government? Can we see Mongolia maybe be an uh, observing member in the future? Is that possible? Well, you know, Mongolia and Turkey established uh, diplomatic relations back in uh, 1969, and uh, we delightfully celebrated the 50th anniversary of the uh, diplomatic relation between our two countries uh, in 2019 by organizing a series of events uh, both in Ankara and Ulaanbaatar city. We uh, define uh, Turkey as our third neighbor and uh, focus on developing our bilateral relationship. Uh, and also we have very good uh, mechanism for, uh, you know, strengthening our cooperation uh, this organization is called Intergo uh, Intergovernmental uh, Trade uh, and Economic Commission, which was established back in uh, 1994, and uh, it is conveyed. Uh, it's conveyed in uh, every two years. Uh, so the last uh, session was held back in uh, 2021. So trade, uh, uh, you know, uh, relation between Mongolia has been increased. Uh, Mongolia and Turkey has been uh, increasing year by year. So, and also we have this uh, Turkish Cooperation Coordination Organization based in Mongolia. And since uh, 94, uh, this organization implemented uh, and also initiated over 700 projects in Mongolia, which greatly contributes to the uh, you know, mutual and bilateral relation development of the two countries. Now, when we look at Mongolia geographically, it shares a border with two superpowers, a tough geography to be in. Uh, China accounts for an estimated 60% of your country's overall economy. Russia is also an important economic and energy partner. Now, how does Mongolia balance its relationship with both countries? What are the areas of cooperation and what are issues of disagreement? Well, uh, you know, uh... We have two big uh, permanent uh, neighbors, China and Russia. Mongolian government uh, maintains uh, close relation with uh, both our both of our neighbors, and we have we, uh, our relations uh, has been growing within the framework work of the comprehensive partnership, strategic partnership agreement. We have a strategic partnership agreement with our two neighbors, and also. Uh, between the two uh, you know, uh, neighbors, we don't have any unresolved political problem. So this is the reason that um, it creates a better environment for uh, improved trade and, and cultural uh, exchange. Uh, I see that you uh, were talking about a feasibility for a pipeline with the Russians. What's the current state of that pipeline? Is that a project that could be realized in the future? Well, this project is important project, not only for Mongolia, it's uh, important for the region. And uh, we have uh, started this, uh, we started this uh, project uh, with the Russian uh, parties uh, in nine, uh, 2019. So the project uh, feasibility study is completed and the next uh, uh, feasibility study, uh, you know, confirmation and or prepare 
you know, the project uh, preparation is being uh, uh, conducted according, according to the uh, schedule. Okay. Well, one last question. I also see that uh, Mongolia institutes a third neighbor policy, and in this policy, uh, strengthening relations with the United States and also other NATO member countries as a centerpiece of bringing balance amongst the two superpower neighbors uh, that uh, Mongolia is uh, very close to uh, Russia and China now. Uh, how, does, how is the relationship with Washington? Well, you know, we have a very unique uh, geographical location, and we keep a close uh, strategic uh, relationship with uh, both our two neighbors and the third neighbors. And we, uh, Mongolia's um, foreign policy is, uh, you know, uh, um, we have uh, open uh, foreign policy which prefers uh, peaceful and also, you know, uh, uh, close relationship with all our uh, neighbors. Deputy Prime Minister Amar Saikan Sain Buyan, thanks for joining us on One on One. Well, it was my pleasure joining you. Thank you.